Fifty years ago, Harry Harlow revolutionised the way we raise our children. He taught us to hold them and to hug them, and in doing so, he became one of America's most celebrated scientists. These tests give us a new definition of something which is extremely important, something which affects their entire personality, something which we call love. He found the key because his work showed that this mother-child relationship and bond could really only be described as, as love. But in order to teach us how to love our children, Harry Harlow performed some of the most chilling and distressing experiments ever seen in an animal laboratory. Harry Harlow was infamous for his work uh, on primates, putting them in all kinds of devices that devastated the infants psychologically. What was it deep down inside him that led him to do those things to animals? But did Harry Harlow have the right to hurt animals to help us? Was the price they paid worth the knowledge we gained? And who was the real Harry Harlow? A brilliant scientist or an unforgivably brutal sadist? Frustrated with his work at the University in Madison, Wisconsin, it was at the local zoo that the young and ambitious Harry Harlow took the first steps in his controversial career. For psychologists and medical researchers, the standard laboratory animal in the 1930s was the white rat. But for Harlow, rats had little appeal. Harlow was spending his time watching orangutans, and as he did so, he became convinced that primates could tell us much more about human behavior than rats ever could. Harlow just gets hooked. He sees this incredible parallel to human behavior, and it's like goodbye rats. He has to go and, and try to persuade the university to let him do it, and they basically say, oh, we have an abandoned box factory. If you fix it up, you can have a laboratory. So he does. Here, Harlow created one of the first primate laboratories in America and began his work to help our understanding of human behavior. For over 30 years, his team included his assistant, Helen Leroy. Harry Harlow spent um, a great deal of time in here. When he was in here, the door was always open. Unless he was in a, a serious conversation that he didn't want anyone to interrupt. So we had a very close working relationship in terms of proximity. So he would sit in here at his desk, which was positioned in front of that window. This way, and his chair was behind it. I think in later years, some people have said, oh, Harry Harlow, I was there and he started doing this research and I was thinking, oh, that's so terrible. How can he do that? Well, I knew those people and um, I don't think they were, I think this awareness has come at a later time and now it seems so obvious. Harlow was about to embark on an ambitious and controversial project to prove to a skeptical scientific world what he had come to believe from watching the orangutans at the zoo, to prove that animals can think. The whole history of psychology, rat-driven psychology at that point, is, oh, no, 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 animals don't think. Harry was the pioneer in working on something that seemed perverse almost, namely that animals could organize their behavior and learn 
And even animals would solve complicated problems in which they had to open a latch and lift the thing and so on and so on for no purpose other than to solve the puzzle. For Harlow, proving that animals can think was just the beginning. Now he needed to breed monkeys for further experiments. And when he separated the infants from their mothers to prevent infection, he made another startling discovery. First of all, the baby monkeys were uh, taken away from the mothers. They were put in these cages with heating pads on them, and they would put a loose diaper in there. Every day you had to take these diapers out that the monkeys had to play with and put clean ones in. But as the monkeys got older, they didn't want to let go of their old diapers. The monkeys just all start crying and rocking and crying and rocking. Well, it was pretty obvious as soon as you gave them the diaper, they would calm down. He saw something with the monkeys clinging to the diapers that intrigued him. He decided to take what he was seeing in these monkeys that he knew so well and take a whack at one of the really big ideas, right, which was that love doesn't exist. This simple, basic reaction made us believe that we could define and measure what had previously been undefinable and unmeasurable. The baby's love for its mother. Baby's love for its mother. Baby's love for its mother. Now, Harry Harlow was eager to study love in a laboratory, to venture into new territory with work that was fraught with controversy, and much of it driven by the principle that the best way to understand the heart is to break it. Maverick American psychologist Harry Harlow had pioneered the use of monkeys for scientific research. He had observed that baby monkeys sought out physical contact and attachment. For Harlow, this was evidence that animals can love. And with this idea, he set about turning the science of psychology on its head. It wasn't a question of whether or not this attachment phenomenon was real or not from our point of view. The only question was how do you set up an experiment to see how this attachment occurs. We started designing some type of object that the monkey could, could cling to. Now this is the wire mother. Harlow and his team created two artificial and contrasting surrogate mothers for the baby monkeys. This is a cloth mother. It is only a wire mother with a cloth cover. We deliberately made the faces different. But this has nothing to do with the present experiment. Having separated the baby monkeys from their own mothers, Harlow wanted to prove that they would choose the soft, comforting surrogate mum with no food over the wire mother with milk. If he could do this, he knew it would transform the way we raise our children. They have absolute patience. They are available 24 hours a day. They never scold or strike their babies in anger. And we have absolute experimental control over them. He took wire mother and a cloth mother 
and um, in the simplest experiment, only wire mom holds the bottle, right? Cloth mom's just cuddly, that's it. And now for the real question. To which mother is there an emotional response? What they found was that these monkeys spent, what, 23 and a half hours out of 24 on the cloth mother? Um, there's some wonderful pictures of a monkey when these are side by side, a baby monkey holding on to cloth mom sideways to get the milk, right? Doesn't even want to let go of the cloth mother. Why exactly is the cloth mother the preferred attachment figure? Well, Harry believed that it was the product of what he called contact comfort. By proving that contact comfort, or touch, was as important to infants as food, Harlow's findings ran counter to what parents were being advised in the 1950s. This was a cold era for child rearing, a time when physical intimacy was discouraged. Give the kid the food that it needs, keep it warm, keep it clean, but you know, don't muck things up by cuddling and so on. Especially boys. Uh, you let them cry, you know, to become men. Uh, you, if, if, you, if you cuddle a boy too much, he might even become gay. I think it's in large part because of the work of Harlow that um, led us to see human development in a very different way and that social contact and physical contact and other things that he showed with his experiments are really critical. So now it's common knowledge that cuddling and holding and comfort is, is, is as important, if from Harry's point of view, more important. Now Harlow wanted to put the love between mother and child to the test and he devised another, more sinister experiment for his baby monkeys. Let's find out how deep and abiding this feeling of affection of the baby for its cloth mother really is. What happens when they go out in the world? What do they look like when they have to interact with something else? And they put them just in a room. Bill Mason really designed this. Um, with, with, you know, little odd, strange objects, cootie bugs I was, and uh, paper and things to climb on, and said, go to monkeys. We know that when our own children are taken to a strange place without their mothers, they are often overwhelmed with fear. This room is just such a new and strange environment for the baby monkeys. If you put cloth mom in, you can see the monkey run to mom. The touch, that ability to cuddle and hold on, had built a, a relationship and a kind of security feeling. You put wire mom in, same basic mom, the baby stay on the floor crying. For Harlow, his experiment with the strange environment had been a success. It proved the strength of the bond between the baby monkeys and their cloth mothers but it was not enough. Now Harlow wanted to push things even further and created another experiment, one that would terrify the baby monkeys. Now, suppose that in addition to an environment that is merely strange, we produce one that's really frightening. Really frightening. Really frightening. <laughs> Really 
we use fear stimuli a lot because what does a child do when it's frightened? It runs to his mother. <laughs>